Most people are missing out on the greatest rice dish in history, or at least one of them. Well, guess what? You're gonna wanna start with this one. Okay, so today we are making biryani. If you've never had it before, you're in for a freaking treat, buddy. It's rich, it's salty, it's got meat, so many textures, and it's so fragrant. You might as well sprout wings and fly off into the clouds. You're like, Ugh. that could be you eating this. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Right, so there's about a billion different kinds of biryani. Maybe not a billion, but this is the one that many people imagine. And it's called Hyderabadi biryani. It's also one of Papa's favorite. Despite the number of ingredients, it's actually pretty easy. First, we're making our own biryani masala powder. Don't be a little baby, okay? Make your own. First, get a small sheet tray, add a quarter cup or 21 grams of coriander seeds, two tablespoons or 13 grams of shad jeera, which is just black cumin seed, two teaspoons or four grams of cloves, 10 green cardamom pods, two black cardamom pods, two star anise, I need to take a breath here. Two teaspoons or five grams of fennel seeds, one teaspoon or four grams of black peppercorns, and three cinnamon sticks. Pop that into an oven that's been preheated to 350 Fahrenheit for about five to seven minutes or until toasted and Sure, you can pop this right into your blender, but you're gonna eviscerate it. Instead, I recommend lightly crushing that either in a mortar and pestle, or you can put it in a bag and hit it with a pan or something, I don't know. Just break it down. Now pop that into your blender, followed by one bay leaf, half a teaspoon, which is slightly under a gram, of fresh ground nutmeg, one teaspoon or three grams of ground mace. Blend on high until as smooth as possible, then sift through a strainer to get it as fine as possible. Done. Moving on to our dahi chutney. I mean, come on, look at this thing. It's more vibrant green than beautiful flower. Again, blender. Rough chop three green chilies. Thai chilies totally work here. Pop those into your blender, followed by one inch knob of ginger. Rough chopped, four cloves of garlic, one cup or 11 grams of cilantro, third cup or four grams of fresh mint. By the way, don't do any of that dried Okay, just throw it out the window. A pinch of shot masala powder, a pinch of cumin powder, salt to taste, and finally three quarters of a cup or 180 grams of a nice thick yogurt. Blend on high until relatively smooth, pour into a bowl, and add additional salt to taste if needed. That's something beautiful right there. All right, last but very important thing before we get into it. Raita, very easy. Medium bowl, add three quarters of a cup or 180 grams of plain yogurt. By the way, this is all full fat. I don't, I don't want any of that low fat stuff, please. Two tablespoons, which is about a gram of chopped fresh cilantro, half a teaspoon or one gram of ground Cumin, a quarter teaspoon or half a gram of ground coriander, and half a cup or 66 grams of a seedless English cucumber that's been grated and lightly salted and drained of its excess water. That's optional, but I like to do it. Season to taste with salt, give it a nice mix, till combined, and then finally fold in two tablespoons or 21 grams of diced red onion and lemon juice to taste for flavor and consistency. Now, listen, the consistency of this really depends on the type of yogurt that you use. The thicker the yogurt, the thicker the right See where I'm going here? Now we're ready to make. First, we marinate our chicken. Now, large bowl. You're gonna need one powder of 450 grams of chicken drumsticks, which is gonna be around four or five. Depends on how thick that chicken is. Two garlic cloves grated, a two-inch piece of ginger grated, two-thirds of a cup or 157 grams of yogurt, one and a half teaspoons or four grams of your biryani masala powder that you made earlier, quarter teaspoon or half a gram of turmeric powder, two teaspoons or one gram of red chili powder. You can totally use paprika, that's fine. Three quarters of a teaspoon or one gram of green cardamom powder, one and a half teaspoons or nine grams of fine sea salt, two Indian green chilies, which like I said, Thai chili's totally fine. Finely chopped, two teaspoons or nine Nine grams of lemon juice. Mix all together to coat thoroughly. And optionally, you can marinate overnight or you can use it right away. It's up to you. I know it's a marinade, so maybe marinate it. Fried onion. Seems like it doesn't belong, right? But it does. First, you're gonna need one and a half large yellow onions. Cut the top, slice it in half, and the root off. Peel, and then slice it a quarter inch or slightly thinner if possible via a mandolin. Now, look, you could do this with a knife. I really recommend a mandolin so that they fry evenly. Now, in a 12 inch saute pan, add three cups or 700 milliliters of vegetable oil. Heat over medium until it's around 325. Then add in your onions in two batches and fry, stirring occasionally until crisp, light and golden brown. Drain on a wire rack or a paper towel, season gently with salt, and that's it. Now, time for our rice. Very important here. First, you're gonna get one and a half cups or 286 grams of aged basmati rice. Please listen. Don't just go and just pick some random basmati rice. Oh, no big deal. <laughs> no, do not do that. Please get the properly highest quality possible. Please. Now, rinse your rice multiple times until the water runs clear. Then let it sit soaking in water for 30 minutes. Then gently drain it, being careful not to break it up. Now, medium-sized pot. Add in seven cups or 1.7 liters of water, one black cardamom pod, one star anise, one bay leaf, one cinnamon stick, five green cardamom pods, three quarters of a teaspoon or one gram of shot jeera, five whole cloves, half a teaspoon or half a gram of ground mace, one tablespoon or 11 grams of fine sea salt, and just a tiny little bit of vegetable oil, like a half teaspoon. Now, bring that to a rolling boil. Once it's boiling, I know this seems wrong, but this is how it's done. Now, add in your soaked basmati rice and let that cook until about 75% of the way done. Not all the way. You want a little bit of rawness on the inside of that grain, which is actually pretty fast. It'll happen in like two to four minutes. Now, while that's going, get a small pot, add three and a half tablespoons or 52 grams of milk and half a teaspoon or much less than a gram. So you could just say a generous pinch, I suppose, of saffron threads and set that to the side. Separately, you're gonna need a thick bottom pot, add in a light drizzle of vegetable oil in the bottom, add your marinated chicken along with all of your marinade, everything. And 
I've got some different herbs for you here. We got a quarter cup or 12 grams of finely chopped mint and a third cup or 18 grams of finely chopped cilantro. That's the whole amount. Now you're gonna take that and you're gonna add three quarters of your cilantro, three quarters of your mint, drizzle in two tablespoons or 27 grams of ghee, just clarified butter, all right, don't you worry. Three quarters of your fried onions, gently stir that together. Now before you add the rice, make sure to taste it. If it needs more salt, salt it now. If you don't salt it now, it's not gonna be salty enough later. Trust me, not enough salt will ruin this. Then on top of that, you're gonna add half your rice, half your remaining amount of cilantro, half your remaining amount of mint, your fried onions, a little bit more biryani masala, light squeeze of half a lemon, then add your second half of rice, the remainder of your mint and cilantro, the remainder of your fried onion, then ever so carefully drizzle on your saffron milk. Now optionally, you can totally strain the saffron milk first if you want, I prefer to. Anyway, drizzle that on, and finally drizzle on a quarter cup or 54 grams of melted ghee. Now there's a cooking method called dumb cooking. I know, that's what it's called. And traditionally it's done with a very basic water dough that's then rolled into a rod and then they seal the pot with that. You can totally do that and it works just fine. It's just really messy. So a lot of homes nowadays will just use a layer of foil in between the lid and the pot. You close it and instead of putting this on a direct flame, what you're gonna do is get a cast iron, heavy bottom pan that your pot fits in, set the flame to medium high so it reaches just over the diameter of the pot. Cook that for 15 minutes, then reduce the temp to low. Do not take the lid off and cook for 20 to 30 more minutes. That's it. At this point, your biryani should be done. The bottom should be beautifully cooked with a light char on your chicken. Gently stir everything together, being careful not to rip up your chicken, and gently take out those succulent fall off the bone pieces of chicken. Pop it on a plate beautifully. Add some additional cilantro or fried onion for garnish, which you might not have. It's fine. And serve with your chutney and raita, and let's taste test and see how we did. Did you see this? We got biryani. Feel good about it. Mm. Oh! See, how do you eat it though? You know, you get a little bit of rice, a little bit of chicken. Wow. It's clean, it's fragrant, multiple spices in your face, and it's filling. Now, a little bit of this. Oh, damn. A little bit of that. Ah! Do not make this without these sauces. They're absolutely a requirement. You need more salt than you think. This could be salted a little bit better. Then just make sure that you're tasting as you go. But you know what else you should do as you go? Watch B roll. God. Uh. Woo, I actually almost passed out doing that. That was maybe a little too much.